Hi, welcome to our Q&A today, Ask the Expert with Dr. Lo Tan. I'm really excited to talk about a recent publication that just came out in the last month or two. Um, first off, I would like to uh, welcome Dr. Lo Tan. Um, she is the Rose Lee and Keith Reinhardt Professor of Urologic Pathology and Deputy Director for Research in the Development of Pathology at Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine in Baltimore, Maryland. She completed her undergraduate degree at Harvard University, followed by medical school and anatomic pathology res residency at the University of Chicago. After a fellowship in urology pathology at Johns Hopkins, she joined the faculty there in 2008 as a physician scientist focused on the molecular pathology of genitourinary tumors. Her NIH and DOD funded laboratory works on in situ prognostics and predictive molecular biomarkers for prostate cancer using human tissue specimens, developing genetically validated markers that have been transitioned into routine clinical use. Welcome, Dr. Lotan. Thanks so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, absolutely. We're, I'm excited. Um, so let's start out with the first question. Um, what is the definition of positive surgical margins at ra radical prostatectomy? Yeah, this is a good question. So, so after the prostatectomy is performed and the prostate is out, um, it comes down to surgical pathology for processing, and we actually um, apply a, a sort of solvent um, insensitive ink to the outside of the prostate so that when, as we slice it up and then prepare even smaller pieces that are going to go um, into tissue blocks that then get processed into the slides that we look at, we can look, see the ink on the external surface of the of the entire prostate in each piece we're looking at. Um, and that essentially tells us exactly where the surgeon cut. So what tissue is left, you know, is really at the border of what was removed from the patient and what is left behind in the patient. Um, and so on every slide, we look at that black ink and we assess whether tumor, if it's present in the slide, um, is touching that black ink. And, and if we look at the you know, pieces from the entire prostate, we can then assess whether um, there's any tumor touching the ink um, in the entire prostate, meaning was any tumor potentially left behind in the patient? And this is one of the types of evaluations that we do. And it, you know, having positive surgical margins after prostatectomy, meaning potentially some tumor left behind, is a you know a poor prognostic factor and associated with recurrence of disease after prostatectomy. Okay. And what is the difference between positive surgical margins at ra radical prostatectomy and extracapsular extension or PT3A? Yeah, this is a, another good question um, because they're correlated but not identical. So, um, you know, positive margins is, as I said, just whether tumor is touching the ink or the very external surface where the surgeon cut. And extra capsular extension um, is, is sort of more generally whether the tumor is outside the sort of histologic boundaries of the prostate. So if it has entered the fat that's right outside of the prostate. So you can have tumor in the fat outside of the prostate, but the surgeon was able to cut all the way around it. So the margins are negative. Um, or conversely, you can have a margin that's positive, but the surgeon actually, um, you know, because of complications during the surgery, cut into the prostate a little bit. So there was not extra prosthetic extension at that exact piece. So you, they could be, you could have both true or neither true or, or um, one or the other. And they, they're correlated. The more that the tum more um, that the tumor spreads outside the prostate, the harder it is to get all the way around it. And therefore, the harder, it, uh, the more likely it is to have positive margins, basically. Yeah, makes sense. What are the clinical implications associated with the detection of positive surgical margins at radical prostatectomy? So, so we know that if if there is potentially tumor left behind in the patient or the margins are positive, that increases the risk of recurrence and presumably primarily local recurrence in the pelvic area um, and the prostate, you know, the prostate bed. Um, there's less data about whether there's, you know, real independent associations with long-term mortality or risk of death from prostate cancer or risk of metastases, but a definite association with biochemical recurrence um, in general. So it, it's a it's a sort of a higher risk feature after prostatectomy. Okay. 
And what is the standard of care for patients that have a positive, positive surgical margin at RP? Yeah, that's a hard question to answer because it's variable and it's been certainly changing over time. Um, you know, recent studies have suggested um, that um, whether you do early radiation therapy or later radiation or salvage type therapy, once the patient's already had biochemical recurrence, in some men at least, this appears to be you know similar efficacy. Um, so, but but I think those studies did not really take into account you know a lot of the detailed pathologic analysis of the sample, such as you know the extent or um, type of positive margin that those patients had. Um, so the role of positive margins in the decision-making process in terms of whether the patient can avoid any additional therapy or whether they should get earlier or later therapy is not very well established. Okay. And how can the genomic prostate score test assessment at the positive surgical margin help decis physicians make decisions? Yeah, so so we know that um, that prostate cancer is very frequently multi-clonal, maybe even in the majority of men, there are multiple independent tumors that have different genomic backgrounds and came from a different original cell, likely. Um, and, and we know um, that understanding the features of the tumor, even just the pathologic features, um, like the uh, grade of the tumor that's left at the margin or the extent of tumor that, in terms of length that's left at the margin um, has an impact on prognosis. So if you have a higher grade tumor at the margin, you're, you know, that is a worse, even a worse prognosis than a patient who has a lower grade tumor left at the margin, as, as you might intuit. Um, so I think the idea is that, you know, incorporating um, features beyond just what we can see under the microscope, the length or the grade, such as genomic features, which we know are also associated with how aggressive a tumor is, will give us even more information. Um, and especially if we can study those specifically at the margin tissue. So we now know not only the grade and the extent of margin positivity, but the actual molecular features of the tumor that's, that's potentially left behind in the patient. Absolutely. No, it's great to see all of those different factors working together to help provide that bigger picture, right? Um, and this study that you recently did, association of GPS at positive margin with recurrence after radical prostatectomy, um, it was recently published in the British Journal of Urology International. Um, can you summarize the study a little bit, um, the design and the results? Yeah, so we, um, we, we made a case cohort design. So we basically selected around 220 patients from a larger cohort of eight, more than 800 patients at Johns Hopkins who had undergone prostatectomy um, and had positive margins after that prostatectomy and then extensive clinical follow-up for biochemical recurrence. Um, so we took that kind of nested group of those 220 patients um, and we looked at the um, GPS score specifically at the tumor um, that was near or adjacent to the positive margin in those cases. And we had a, a valuable GPS scores in about 200 patients total. Um, and what we found is that if we looked at, at GPS as a, you know, as a, as a variable by itself in univariable analyses, for about every 20 unit increase in GPS, and the score goes from zero to 100, as you know, um, we had about a nearly threefold increase in the risk of biochemical recurrence for that patient after prostatectomy. So the higher the GPS score, the, high, you know, the higher the risk of recurrence. Um, and, and amazingly, even if we adjusted for really all of the known additional clinical pathologic factors that are associated with risk of recurrence after prostatectomy, so we adjusted for age and race, and then the CAPRA-S score, which is kind of the gold standard that incorporates the preoperative PSA, the tumor grade, stage, and margin status at prostatectomy. Um, if we adjusted for all those and, and also also adjusted for the grade of the tumor at the margin specifically um, and whether the patient had had any adjuvant therapy, um, it's the uh, GPS still remained associated um, independent of all those other variables with the risk of recurrence and about a 1.5 fold increase in risk per 20 unit increase in GPS. Um, so it's really an independent um, 
prognostic factor even after we incorporated all those other variables. And that's pretty powerful because, you know, typically once we've accounted for all these other clinical pathologic variables, there's not that much room for molecular testing to add um, information. But this one appeared to do that in this cohort. Awesome. That's fantastic. Um, what were some of the inclusion and exclusion criteria for that patient selection? Yeah, so it was a single institution um, cohort study. Um, so, you know, they were all patients at Johns Hopkins. Um, they ha had prostatectomies in a particular time frame we chose from 2008 to 2017 um, because that gave us an adequate time for follow-up um, after prostatectomy you typically want five years or so. Um, and then they all had positive margins. The patients had to have available um, follow-up data and kind of complete clinical pathologic data. So if any of those variables were missing, we excluded those patients. Um, and they had to have enough tumor in that area near the margin that we could isolate adequate RNA and, and do a GPS score. So if we had a few, not many, just a handful of patients that fell out because uh, we couldn't get adequate RNA or we no longer had uh, tissue at that margin area because it was such a small region. Right. Okay, that makes sense. All right, so this is the first study um, that's evaluated genomics at positive surgical margins at radical prostatectomy. Um, and in this regard, what is the take home message in terms of the genomic prostate score and risk stratification? And what are your future perspectives for this subset of patients? Yeah, so I think the take home message is that, you know, this molecular test, which the 17 gene classifier adds, you know, to, to standard clinical pathologic variables in terms of predicting recurrence after prostatectomy in patients um, who have positive surgical margins. So it can potentially um, be an additional piece of information that clinicians can, um, you know, take into account as they um, have this joint and, you know, very complex decision making with patients in terms of whether they should get additional therapy and when they should get additional therapy after prostatectomy. Um, we definitely have to study it, you know, in um, additional, uh, you know, uh, cohorts from other institutions. Um, and then hopefully in the, in the setting of clinical trials where we're really um, starting to make decisions about early versus late radiation therapy and looking at whether um, the GPS can add additional information in that particular, you know, set of questions. Um, but I think this is a great starting point. It really was one of the first times the GPS was studied in the context of prostatectomy tissue. Um, and so, and a very unique study where we look specifically at the margin. There have been very few studies yeah. looking at any molecular mar uh, markers, specifically at the margin tissue. So, um, yeah. we think it's a great first step. Absolutely. I think I, I love that unique aspect of this study at the positive surgical margin. So, um, it's, it's, a, it's a cool perspective to look at it in that kind of detail. Um, and next question is, how do genomics and pathology work together to help risk stratify prostate cancer patients? Yeah, so I think this study is a good example of that. I and mean, we, we definitely know um, that there's more than meets the eye to prostate cancer in the sense that what we see under the microscope um, definitely adds important prognostic information. We assess the grade of the tumor and the prostatectomy and the stage and, um, and the margin status, but but there's no question that there's more than we can we can see. We've been doing this same kind of staging and grading actually for decades and decades. So um, in this molecular era, I think it's clear that we'll have additional information to kind of wrap into that analysis. Um, and these sort of multi-gene classifiers or additional sequencing um, studies, other molecular tools may help us to better um, risk stratify patients. And I think that's really kind of the next frontier um, in terms of, of adding to, to contemporary pathologic analysis. Absolutely. Okay. And then on a more personal note, um, why did you decide to go into pathology? And I know you specialize in neurologic pathology. So tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, so I think most pathologists will say, you know, they really love being in a very definitive sort of diagnostically oriented specialty. So that's definitely what attracted me to pathology is sort of um, you know, trying to solve diagnostic mysteries and feeling you know, like like you have the final word on that, right? Because you really have the the tissue laid out before you and all this. Now we have so many molecular tests and we're starting to have AI or artificial intelligence 
um, tools to help us with histologic analyses under the microscope. Um, so I think that the sort of definitive diagnostic aspects of it were exciting. Um, and urologic pathology um, was a little bit of an accident. I got interested in um, studying um, metastasis in, in a lab when I was a resident, and the lab happened to focus on urologic pathology. Um, and so I started working with a lot of urologists and actually really enjoyed that. They're a great group. Um, and so got interested in, in how we can apply these kinds of molecular tools um, to urologic, uh, oncologic diseases like prostate cancer. Absolutely. That's fantastic. I love I love getting those like personal details. What, why do you do what you do? It's always so fun to learn and um, your passion shows through. So um, we're glad you decided to go into that. But um, yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, I wanted to thank you for your time today for this great question and answer session. Um, if you're interested, um, at Association of Genomic Prostate Score at Positive Margin with Recurrence After, after Radical Prostatectomy um, is in the British Journal of Urology International. Um, it is available. You can find it on PubMed. Um, so please check it out if you'd like to read the whole study. Um, if you'd like more information about GPS, you can visit um, mdxhealth.com. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to marketing at mdxhealth.com with any questions. Um, and if you do have any for Dr. Lotan, please send them along and I will make sure to connect you with her. Um, so thank, again, thank you again for your time today. I hope you have a great rest of your week. Thanks so much. It was a pleasure talking.